A pope so poorly embalmed that he decomposed all over the streets of Rome. A guy who cobbled together a dead woman's corpse and slept next to it for seven whole years. This is... The Pope Who Exploded and Other Gruesome Tales of Embalmment Gone Horribly Wrong! Welcome into Terrible Tales. We are greeted today with Dan and Tucker. So, uh, Dan, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Orlando, Florida. Sure are. Wow. And Tucker? Los Angeles, if you can um, believe it. Sorry. I'm Rick Lickflick, and this is Terrible Tales, a quiz show where I beautifully recount the story of a gruesome historical event. I will quiz my acceptable guess about the topic. The person with the highest score at the end wins a special prize that is unique to each episode and is only revealed once the game is over. Is it a trip to the Vatican? Maybe. A Pope hat? That would be fun. Mm. Does that make sense, everyone? You're the Emperor. Yes, yeah, yes, you're the emperor. yes. Yeah, yeah. makes sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, before we get into the story of our fabulous dead Pope, let's take a look at what embalmment is and if there are any other famous cases of embalmment gone horribly right or wrong. So for our first question, what actually is embalmment? Is it A, the process of preserving the body after death? B, the process of decorating the corpse after death? Or C, the process of applying lip balm to a corpse after death? Bleh. So we're going to be going with slaps, mm. okay? So if you could just slap back in. Okay, what's your answer? A, the process of preserving a dead body. That is correct. Oh. That is correct. You get 77 points for that. So that's sure. That's big. That's a big lower, that's a foundational amount of points. Okay. There's going to be plenty more points to be had, but that's great, okay? Now, while I may want a uh, lip balm applied to my corpse, as is in my will, the correct answer is A. Now, Tucker, for bonus points, oh, okay. explain to us in detail what the process of embalmment is. The more scientific you sound, the more points you're gonna get. And if you don't know, you just gotta make it up along the way. Okay, so embalmment is the specific process and actually a science. And what it is, is you take a corpse and you soak it in the chemical compound of sodium chloride to make sure all the uh, bacteria and everything gets out of the body, all the fluids that you don't want in there. Uh, and, and after it's all out of there, uh, you wrap it like a mummy. You wrap it like a mummy? <laughs> I don't, okay, I don't know, you told me to make things up. Okay, I don't. No, I did not tell you to make things up. I told you to get it as scientifically correct as possible. We have that on tape. <laughs> okay, roll back the tape. If you don't know, you just gotta make it up along the way. We're gonna give you one point still on get that. A point. You still get a point, which is great, but it's actually embarrassing because there were up to a thousand points available on that one. <laughs> oh, shoot. Um, also, this is a fun fact uh, that I found in my research. They massage the bodies. The process of embalming world leaders is its own separate industry, if you can believe it. That brings me to our next question. Which one of the following world leaders is still on display to this day? A, Vladimir Lenin, who's been dead since 1924. B, Eva Peron, who's been dead since 1952. Or C, Joseph Stalin, who died in 1953. Dan. Vladimir Lenin. That is correct! That is correct! Okay. And that's for 500 points, so shooting back out into the I... lead. <laughs> sure, sure, I won't question your process. Can... You're right, because I can always take points away. Oh God, okay. <laughs> yes, that is correct, Dan Lennon has been on display for almost 100 years. Scientists who first embalmed his body confirmed that it could be preserved indefinitely with maintenance and periodic re-embalming. Because his veins, a typical vehicle for embalming, were removed during his autopsy, other means are needed to preserve his body one of which is a rubber suit under Lennon's clothing, which allows embalming fluid to constantly circle around him. Over the years, parts of his body, including his facial features, have been sculpted out of a material to allow him to look in death as he did in life. I would call this a case of successful embalmment, which is exactly the opposite of our next guy, Carl Tanzler. Now, Tucker, yes. for equal points, you're gonna equal his points if okay. you do this. What do you think Carl Tanzler did? And for some bonus points, why don't you do it with a little bit of ASMR? Oh, okay. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Carl Tanzler. Do I know who he is? No, but I will start saying things and hopefully I'm correct. Carl Tanzler was a carpenter who moonlit as a Lyft driver. He used to do Uber, but they didn't pay as well. Carl Tanzler got in a big hunk of trouble for killing someone and not embalming them properly. Had he embalmed them properly, the police would have said, okay, that's a good job, so you won't go to jail. But he did poorly. 
Oh, how I wish you were right, Tucker, because that would be less traumatizing. No, this guy became obsessed with a dying girl. Then he stole her corpse from a mausoleum. Then he preserved her body by filling her internal cavities with rags and securing her bones together with wire hanger. Then he used wax and plaster to repair her and replace her scalp with real hair and used silk to replace her skin and filled her eyes with glass. So, how does that make you guys feel? I feel okay with it. Uh, if you've seen the photos, like the description's good, the photos. They're really, good? I mean, good subjectively, but they're, they're good. All right, well, you're horrifying. <laughs> Tucker, yeah, how do you feel about it? I'm literally like, what? Um, I don't. I don't feel good. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Not good. Good. So the the bads way outweigh the goods because there's two people who feel bad and one psychopath who feels good. But <laughs> oh. me personally, I try not to think about Carl Tanzler because it makes it difficult for me to sleep at night. I could also say the same for our main story of the day, which is a story that involves a dead pope and a quack doctor whose unusual methods of embalming probably scarred the Vatican. This brings me to our next question. Who is the Pope that I'm referring to? I haven't given oh. any of the options yet. Okay, calm. So, King. so, so honestly, knows. honestly, let's try this. Yeah. Who? It was Pope Pius the... I don't remember the number. You're awesome. gonna have to give me a number. Every Pope is a number. Give we me the know. options. Give me the... Oh, now he wants Now I want choice. the options. Now <laughs> okay, but I, I, I want you to know because I'm the host. I'm gonna give the options, but Tucker gets first dibs. Oh, wow. Oh, you just, shoot! You just, okay, Pius. Pope Pius II, Pope Pius VII. It's the 12th. Oh, it's the 12th. It's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I'm not embarrassed. You are. Pope Pius II, Pope Pius XII, or Pope Pius Pius III. Can I buzz in? You still cannot buzz in, Dan. <laughs> you changed one of the answers to the correct answer. I, I'm going to have to go with B final answer. Okay. I mean, VII -I versus XII. That's confusing, just for the record. Thank you so much. Yeah. And honestly, the fact that you gave me uh, an out on that and make me feel a little better, you get some extra points, because you are correct. You are 100% correct. The answer is B. Uh, the winner's only supposed to get 10 points, but again, I'm, I'm bumping that up, because thank you. <laughs> thank that. you. I will say, your knowledge is, it's kind of scaring me, because you, it's how do you know Pius? just spooky stuff, I don't know. Wow. It's... Pope Pius XII, born Eugenio Maria Giuseppe Giovanni Pacelli in 1876. Quick, Dan Tucker, repeat the name I just said for bonus points. You have three seconds, go. G no, I'm, uh, this <laughs> no, that is wrong. One of you didn't even try. Originally from Rome, Eugenio Maria Giuseppe Giovanni Pacelli was elected pope in 1939 and chose the name Pius. He was known as the Pope of Silence for his inaction during World War II. In 1958, he died at the summer papal residence in Castel Gandolfo, which is where our story really takes a turn. Enter Riccardo Galesi Lisi, Pope Pius' personal papal physician. When Pope Pius died, there were two major mishaps that occurred, both caused by Galese Lisi. For our next question, what was the first mishap? Did he A, sell photos of the Pope on his deathbed to the press? B, get caught wearing the Pope's hat and robe? Ugh, awkward. Or C, flood the papal residence with gray water? C, flood the papal residence with gray water. <laughs> That was tremendous because you not only slapped your leg, you also buzzed it. <laughs> you never know. It's tremendous. You never know. And you know what? You're going to get five points for that, but you're going to lose ten points for being wrong. Bam! Dan. Mm -hmm. uh, the photos. He sold photos of the dead pope. Dan, you are exactly correct. The answer is A, and that is for 500 points. I mean, at this point, we're just saying numbers. Yes, tis A. And in addition to selling photos of the Pope on his deathbed, Galezi Lisi also cut a deal with the press to notify them of his passing. But all of this paled in comparison to the second, more gruesome mishap, which was the inept handling of the Pope's body after his death. Galezi Lisi was originally an oculist who assisted the Pope when he experienced eye strain before taking the papacy. Pope Pius would then appoint him his papal physician, though Galezi Lisi would generally come to be considered a quack. It's said that Pope Pius XII was averse to the idea of invasive preservation, which is why upon his death, Galezi Lisi took it upon himself to embalm him, despite having absolutely no training in the matter. 
Instead of a typical embalming process where bodily fluids are drained from the body and replaced with embalming fluid, Galazi Lisi decided to use a different method, which he claimed was used on the body of Jesus Christ. So Dan, our direct request for you, while doing an impression of Galazi Lisi, explain to us what this method is. Make it up as you go along, and I may or may not shout out a few celebrity voices for you to do. Mm -hmm. Your time started a second ago. I'm Galisi, the first name I don't remember. Um, and when you're embalming Jesus, first you're gonna cover Christopher him. Christopher Walken. In, you're gonna cover him in crystals, and you're gonna you're gonna prey upon the crystals. Dame Judy Dench. Um, is she British? Yes. Uh, so you bring <laughs> um, awesome powers. I, I Baby, do I make you Jesus? I don't that actually, know. <laughs> by the way, can I just say, that actually sounded more like Christopher Walken <laughs> than the Christopher Walken impression. That was a lot of noises and not a lot of words. But I can give you the true, actual information. But apparently, Galazi Lisi found a way to embalm the body himself without any incision. This process, which was described as aromatic osmosis in the press, involved the body of the Pope, clothes and all, being sprinkled with resins, oils, and chemicals that were supposed to act as a deoxidizer. Cellophane was then wrapped around the body to be left on for 20 hours. 20 hours later, the cellophane would be removed and the body would be transferred in a casket to Rome. Now, my next question for you guys is, what do you think happened next? A, the mishandling of the Pope's body led to skin falling off. B, the Pope began to rapidly decompose, filling the streets of Italy with a foul stench. C, Galazi Lisi was arrested for mishandling a corpse. I think he started to smell bad. I think that really sped up the process. And you are correct. Oh! The answer is B. Oh my gosh. The streets of Italy were filled with Pope stink, and that is for 2,700 points. Whoa, Just okay. shooting up the boards there, Tucker. Hello. Yes, that is exactly what happened, because Galazi Lisi's method only really seemed to accelerate the decomposition. So when a procession from Castel Gandolfo to Rome transported the late Pope, the smell from the rotting body was so bad that stops had to be made often by drivers of the hearse who could not stand it. But that's not all. It gets worse. Yes, for it was a stop at the Basilica of St. John Lateran that would turn the gruesome into the downright revolting. For our next question, it is said that while the Pope's body was inside the Basilica for a service, those attending heard what? A loud pop like a firecracker coming from inside the casket? The sound of gas being expelled from the body like loud flatulence? Or a woman screaming at the sight of something? Dan, Tucker, we're going to need to hear those knee slaps. I mean, B, B flatulence. He B. was gaseous. Um, unfortunately, I'm the only one who's farting. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> then it's going to have to be A, a pop. A is correct, a pop. What? Yes, folks, horrifyingly, the answer is A. While at the service, those attending heard a loud pop coming from inside the casket. Because Galazi Lisi didn't actually do anything to preserve the body, it's likely that gas was building up inside the body, and presumably the casket. As the corpse broke down, that buildup of pressure can cause bodies to explode. So that firecracker popping sound? It was presumably the seal of the coffin itself exploding from the pressure that was building inside. God. It's like a beached whale. Like they, yeah. they sit on the beach and then they explode, right? That makes what? sense. Yeah. The, the tracks that happens. Yeah. The Pope was a beached whale. Yeah. Despite what we'll conservatively call a fiasco, the body was still lain and stayed at St. Peter's Basilica to allow people to pay their respects for some reason. It is said that Pope Pius's body turned a shade of emerald green and that the eyes of the Swiss guards standing near the body smartened and watered, AKA they were stinging and watery from the smell. <laughs> Sounds like me at prom. Uh, oh God. Overnight, some sources say that Galazi Lisi conducted a second embalming while others say that a team of actual professionals were brought in to try and stop the decay as much as possible. Though I'm guessing they'd have to work miracles to fix a body that was literally exploding. <laughs> I just love that everyone just pretended to be cool with it. Everyone pretended <laughs> to be cool with it. I mean, they were just like, I don't know, the Pope wants this. It's like, I guess this happens. Yeah. Who gave them <laughs> access to the body again? They I were like, know. let's give them another try. Nonetheless, the Pope's body continued to lay in state for three days because the people at the Vatican are obviously sadists. After that, the Pope was finally buried, and that, well, is that. Well, gang, it's time to announce our winner. And after tabulating the points, the winner is... Dan! 
I'm not interested in the tabulation, but okay. Too bad yeah. you don't get to recap this book. <laughs> now, you of course have won a prize. It's an air freshener and a popad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, put it Thank on. You. Put, put it on. on. Okay. Put it on. Um, I don't know which is the front, but I will put, yeah, this bang. is right. Oh, you look great. This is. I have two maybe. Little bunny foo foo so in the front. Cute. I love it. You can tie it up <laughs> so it doesn't blow away in the wind. That is typically a problem the Pope has. Yeah. Tucker, what was your favorite part? I personally liked every part because I had a bundle of fun here. I didn't like having to make up embalming because that was really stressful and I didn't like lying to you. Well, I don't want to ever lie to you again. What have you been lying about? <laughs> and now that we've said <laughs> our goodbyes, here is a cool random Getty video that the producer found while doing research on this topic. For your information, they typed Italy Pope into the search bar. And if you look closely, you'll see a hint to what next week's episode is about. If you catch it, leave your findings in the comment. Spooky ending. <laughs>